Hi, my name is Matt Bowler, and in this video we will be going over basic intrusion prevention systems implementation using the Cisco Security Device Manager, or more commonly known as the SDM. Our topology here uh, may look a little familiar if you've seen the GRE tunnel or the VPN labs that I've done. Uh, we have three routers here our main router where we will do the IPS implementation and configuration will be on router 1 and I am connected to router 1 via a loopback adapter on my laptop that's how our connectivity will occur uh, through the SDM router 1 is connected to router 2 and router 2 is connected to router 3 you can see the interfaces and IP addresses here are color coded and that is done intentionally. Our blue interfaces are the interfaces and IPs that will have connectivity. And the red interfaces you can see here are ones that I do not uh, want being able to ping or, uh, well we're just going to do a basic ICMP request block in this lab. but you you'll be able to see later well, once we get into the SDM all the potential uh, attacks that are being mitigated or taken care of on router 1 but like I said we'll just do a basic ping request denial and uh, dropping of that packet in this lab so if I were on router 2 and sourcing from either of these interfaces attempting to ping router 1 or anything beyond router 1 on the other side here it'll be denied but if I am on router 3 I will be able to ping across and uh, we will accomplish interconnectivity through EIGRP you can see it's running autonomous system 10 on the following networks the 172.16.1.0 with the 24-bit subnet mask and the 10.1.1.0 and 10.2.2.0 each with the 30-bit uh, two hosts available subnet masks and networks there. To begin I already have the interfaces and IP addresses configured on router 2 and 3 as well as EIGRP and now I need to go on to router 1 and uh, finish the configuration so we can do some basic testing, get into the SDM, and uh, go over some of the features that, that we can utilize here within Cisco's SDM as it relates to uh, intrusion prevention, configuration and implementation, and also verification. If I bring up router 1, uh, you can see I just booted it up, so I will not enter the initial configuration dialog. One of the first things that I will do here is some of the basic uh, lab setup that I have whenever I'm going to do a lab. I set the exec timeout on the line console to never and I like to set logging to synchronous so I don't have messages interrupting uh, my text or output as I'm typing. So I'll go into configure terminal mode and I'm going to rename this router first of all R1 go into the line console for uh, zero line there and issue the no exec timeout as well as login synchronous but I want to type out the whole command I can just hit tab and it'll complete that command for me I'm going to back out and uh, in order to access the device I will need to configure the local database with at least one user account with the privilege level of 15 and I will need to specify the HTTP server authentication method to use either AAA, you can set it to use the enable password or you can have it point towards the local database and in this particular case I will have it use the local database to create the account, I will enter the command username. We we'll use uh, the username of Matt and a privilege level of 15 with a secret password of Cisco, all lowercase. 
the common password in all of my labs. The next thing is specify the HTTP authentication. We can see right here authentication method. to use the local database and that's the only command we need to type in there. Now I need to configure the interfaces so that I can actually have connectivity between the devices here. We'll configure the fast ethernet 00, 00 interface first and we can see our IP that we have designated. It's the 10.1.1.1 with the 30-bit mask. Great when you just have two devices directly connecting to each other. It uh, protects space and it's also a good security feature. See, it uh, has the ability to mitigate some spoofing but not completely, but you are limiting that link to only two potential hosts. So it's not like you have a, an entire 24-bit uh, subnet for only two devices that need to be talking to each other. So just something to consider when you have point-to-point -point links like that is you use a 30-bit mask with the two available hosts. I'm going to hard code the duplex to full and the speed to 100 and then issue a no shutdown command to bring that link up. I'm going to back out now and configure the fast ethernet 1 slash 0 interface. with the IP address that we have shown there on the topology. 1.1 with the 24-bit mask. And I'm going to hard code the duplex to full and the speed to 10 because the loopback on my laptop only is running is only running at uh, 10 megabits. And we'll do a, new, a no shutdown on that port as well and we should have basic connectivity here if I bring up a command line on the computer and attempt to ping the router, we should have connectivity. And we do. Try and ping the other end of the router here. We have connectivity. And if I want to ping the next hop on uh, router 2, the 10.1.1.2 address here, We can see that since EIGRP has not yet been configured on router 1, the connectivity is null. We, we cannot reach that device. So we'll bring up router 1, exit out of interface configuration mode, and enter the router EIGRP mode for autonomous system 10 as we have shown here in the, the diagram.